Hi friends, my name is Emily. Welcome to Oh, I'm Lonely. It's my podcast about unpacking the big feelings that I have that usually whittle down to loneliness and disconnection from various aspects of my life, from career, communities, loved ones, and sometimes it's just about being plain old alone. Here we talk about all the different places loneliness creeps its sweet baby self into and I try to understand what story that loneliness is trying to tell me. So please join me because even though it's lonely here, you aren't alone. Hi friends, welcome back to the podcast. Um, It's been some time. It has been a while since I've sat down and recorded something by myself. I've been lucky enough to, if you hear... <laughs> If you hear weird noises, yet again, it's Daisy. This dog is my shadow and she is driving me up a wall these days. I love her to death. I love this dog. She gives me company. She makes me feel safe. But oh, I know being a parent of a tiny humans is probably the hardest thing in the world. But being a dog parent to a dog that won't leave you the fuck alone when you just want to do something for yourself is and is needy and is crying at you all the time. That's also very tough. And I, uh, especially if you're neurodivergent in any type of way, <laughs> A-A-K-A me. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. And I'm having a bit of an activated day. So I wanted to try to turn that around. And I wanted to do something that I've been. Oh, Daisy. So today I'm I'm really excited because I'm doing something that I used to do on my YouTube channel. Yes, I had a, and still do have a YouTube channel. I still upload usually more of like my vlog-like stuff because this year I finally started traveling again to see the husband on the road. So regardless, that's Emily Martinez Entertainer, if you want to look me up on YouTube. But I used to do this series, and I think I started in 2017. Not sure if I uploaded 2017, but I definitely filmed it. It's a very common um, common occurrence for me. It was called, it was basically my, my yearly roundup of things I either loved, I learned, or I loathed. I don't quite know where the idea came from. I feel like it came from um, the Grinch because when he goes, loathe entirely. And honestly, like I live by the Grinch so much of the time. I feel like I am the Grinch. Um, Grinch of my own life. Uh, uh, We are having an activate a day and that's okay. So I decided, I thought of this the other day, I think when I was at the gym, your girl works out. Um, I was like, wait, I want to do like a yearly roundup. I don't want my first episode back after this, the soft launch, as I'm calling it, of these previous episodes. I want to do like a roundup. And why don't I just do a formula that I already know? And maybe it's better for like a podcasting space. And I'm excited to be able to do this for years to come because I think this is a really good way for me to look back on my year. I think it's easy for me to kind of forget uh, a lot of the little things that happen that are usually good um, in my life after a course of the year because it's so it's so easy to let the big milestones and to let the big picture things um or the big moment things be like the the thing that takes over from the year. But there's a lot that happens and there's a lot of little nuanced things that I'm just like, oh, fuck, yeah, that happened too. And so this is kind of my way of expressing that and reflecting back on that. I would love if you would tell me some of your things you loved, learned, and loathed, uh, maybe in a comment section on Apple iTunes or – on Instagram, on the little post that's going to be about this episode. So since I've been doing this since 2017, 2018, it's always like 18 things, 19 things. Um, And I think I skipped over, no, I did 20, no, I didn't do 2020 and I didn't do 2021 because those years are going to be pushed into the back of our brain and worked on through therapy because they cause so much trauma. So 2022 is where we're back at, BB. Okay, so these are my 22 plus um, things that I loved, learned, and loathed 
in the year of 2022. So I want to start with loved. Um, so num- And this is in no particular order either because I don't have the energy for that. Um, I just, it's whatever my brain thought of in the moment and that's good enough. So the first thing that I loved this year, um, I think with Gabe being gone and really having to rework my entire existence of who I am um, into just my independence and and being alone in a space and living alone in a space, um, my home decor and just my style and my love of my home became something that was so pivotal to me this year, probably more so than any other year. I look around my space and there's so many little pockets that give me joy. I'm kind of at a I'm kind of at a a, a spot right now where I don't feel much inspiration because I think I got a little, you know, inspired out with the holiday decor. I mean, I feel like I've come really full circle because when we looked at this place and we were, we saw this place at like right around Thanksgiving 2021 and the thing that made me like fall in love with it strangely and it's like the most suburban thing I think I've ever thought about a space was I saw the stairwell because I I have two floors to my place and all I thought of was oh my god I can't wait to put Christmas decorations on the stairwell and that's what made me go I want to live here I've never had a space like that where something layout wise has made me go I can't wait to decorate that for Christmas and that's stuck with me so so when I when I decorated it for Christmas this year, I like made these. I have a, I have a whole home decor account, so if you want to follow that, that's um that's called the whole being home thing. I I found that like I really brought that image to life, and I made like these paper snowflakes, and I put garland and lights and little bells, and I was like looking at it, and I went, "Here we are! How beautiful is that?" And so it feels like a real, that felt like a real circular moment for me, which is so silly to some people probably. It's just decorations on a stairwell, but like that idea brought to life, like that's what made me fall in love with this space. And the space has been so much to me over this past year. Like there's a lot of things that give me grief about not living in the city anymore in terms of like a belonging feeling and a loneliness feeling and a weird sense of like, did I give up? Even though I absolutely haven't. I live closer to a train station now than I ever have ever lived to a train station. You know, it's that idea of like, oh, to be an actor, you have to live in the city, which is just horseshit. And the city is not affordable. And if you live in the city and you're doing the damn thing, I give you so much props, but we all know how hard it is. There's like no smoke and mirrors about that. It's very, very difficult to live in New York City and work in New York City and survive in New York City. So those of you who are doing it, I commend you, but we all know it's hard. And so I don't think there's anything wrong when you decide to move out of a city or move out of a space that is stereotypical to like the career you want, especially when you're still fucking fighting for that career. So, um, you know, live where you feel happy. And this house makes me feel happy. And I'm trying to think about when Gabe does come home permanently, (laughs) or at least until the next fucking gig that either of us have, do I undecorate it completely so we put it together together or do I go bring your stuff and find a place to put it like I don't know it's because this very much feels like my home like I never lived by myself before I've never lived by myself before you know I've either always had roommates or I lived with my parents for a while or I lived with Gabe so it's been I never thought about it like that like I've never lived by myself it has its perks and it definitely has its drawbacks, but decorating every room to the way I like it so far has been really nice. And I really hope I can feel inspired to figure out other rooms like the bathroom. I really want to find a way that just really sparks joy and I don't know, moving things around and, and reformulating ways I, I use certain like maybe furniture pieces or, and I'd love to create more of like a, a proper podcasting type space because I'm just at my desk right now. Um, and that's why it's a little echoey. Uh, number two, what's something that I learned this year? I fucking learned how to cook, y'all. Hello Fresh, sponsor this bitch. Because like I learned how to freaking cook. I was doing this little project on, it was so condescending. I was doing this little project on Instagram when I would like go live and cook. And it was really stressful. I was like, 
I was like, wait, why am I putting a microscope on something that already makes me feel very insecure just for like the idea of maybe people laughing at it? I was like, let's not have people laugh at my expense. Like I can do that myself. I do it very well myself. I don't need to invite the world into doing it too. And so I've just started to focus on cooking for um, for myself. The first couple like weeks, maybe month or two of doing it was really, really um, intimidating and really – I felt like I was like shaky all the time and and very um, having a hard time making decisions and panicking at each step. I mean, what's great about HelloFresh, this isn't a sponsored thing, but like this just, it's just what I use. Like using HelloFresh, I found I could, I could really like do everything like according to the directions. And I came out with something that like was really, really tasty. And I found stuff that like, oh, I don't like cooking that. So I'm not going to choose that anymore. Or I really like cooking that. And then I have had little moments where I start to experiment on days that I don't have like a HelloFresh like meal to cook. I find myself experimenting with like how to make different sauces for like my pasta or, you know, just different ways to like season things because this white girl is learning how to season shit. No more crappy chicken for me. Thank you. And I've cooked friends meals. I've made my mom food. I've made my in-laws food. I make Gabe food when he's been home, like it feels really good to feel like, oh, this is something I can contribute to your experience of being with me. And it's a life skill. Like I realized, oh, I need to learn how to cook to survive. And now it's something that I actually kind of enjoy doing. I don't know why I feel like hesitant to say that. I do enjoy cooking. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do enjoy it now. Okay. My first thing I'm loathing, it was actually a little difficult to fi- to think of things I loathe when like throughout the day I'm like, oh, I hate that. <laughs> but one thing I fucking loathe and I keep having happen to me is paper cuts and worse than paper cuts, cardboard cuts. Can cardboard cuts just burn in the fiery the hellscape? Because, oh my God, I think maybe it's because I'm getting more boxes because of like Hello Fresh. But like the amount of like slices that I get on my sweet, adorable, gorgeous BB fingers is infuriating. Right now I have one like on on my nail bed that I think is from when I put, I was very quickly putting on like press on nails last weekend. And I think I just caught it or I don't know what I did, but it's just kind of like a open wound. <laughs> And it's very small, but it hurts like the dickens. And I'm, I hate them so much. Like flames at the side of my face, he heaving breaths. That is my absolute identity when it comes to paper cuts and cardboard cuts. All right. So the next thing that I love, okay, this is a song and it is not a new song, but I have found a resurgence of a love of the song. And I've been telling everybody recently, hands down, one of the best songs I think ever written is Turn the Beat Around by Vicky Sue Robinson. This song, I've had to sing it for gigs. I've sang background vocals. I've sang lead. I've just rocked out to it. I've heard people singing it. This is the this is the perfect song. It's just the perfect song. Singing the harmonies is dope as hell, especially when you're the top one. You just get to wail. It's It just sits right in my wheelhouse of like, ooh, it's my fucking money note. And I just love it. I love it. I love singing it. I love singing at a, at a wedding. It feels like it always like gets people going. Even if it just gets me going, like that's enough. I truly, like whenever I sing that song, no matter what part I'm singing, I'm singing it for myself. And I love that. I don't think I've had a song do that for me in a long time. It's got those cool verses with the syncopated rhythm and the rat tat 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 on the drums. If you haven't heard it, go freaking listen to it. It's so good. I love it so much. I did a gig for my friend's solo show, Nicole Vanessa Ortiz, and she sang it fabulously. And it was just, the crowd loved it. And I was just like, this is the, per- it's the perfect song. So if you don't know it, now you know. Going off of that, um... Actually, speaking of Nicole, um, I just had an opportunity to sing with her because different circumstances, she didn't have a, or one of one of two background singers for her gig, and it was a solo show that she'd been working on for a really long time, and she needed someone else to help fill the space and dis- the sound, 
and she asked me to do it. And I found out within hours of the show and we learned the show and we stumbled through the show physically and mentally and verbally. And, um, and then it was a great success. It was a hit and Nicole was fucking fabulous. And I felt like I, I felt really special to be part of it. It was just another reminder that the best opportunities in this business and really in life come from the people that care about you most. I will go on audition after audition. I will, I will send in those submissions, girl. The best opportunities come from people that know you personally. And I've heard that so many times. And, you know, some of the greats will tell you like on, on Broadway and be like, oh, it's about who you know. And yeah, and I think there puts a pressure on that to that you have to know everyone. But like, right? Like, oh, I have to I have to network constantly. Like everybody needs to know me. But like if you just like look to your left and look to your right, if you've got friends in the industry that are working and that are creating stuff, harness those relationships because those are going to be the people that go, oh, I can't do it, but I've got a friend who's got a similar sound to me or, oh, I know someone who's perfect for that. Like I love connecting friends with other friends to help them find living situations or um, help them get a gig. I also love when that happens to me because those feel really, really special. Those are the opportunities and those are the moments that I think people cherish the most in their careers. Yes, there's this feeling of like, yeah, like I proved the haters wrong. Like I started from the bottom and now I'm a Broadway lead or now I'm a lead in a movie. When like, yeah, that's great. And I've been there and I'm still working through that kind of stuff mentally. LOL, not me saying that I <laughs> became a Broadway star from the bottom in one day, but I don't, <laughs> it's not what I meant. But like to harness relationships with people and to want the best for people and for those people to also want the best for you and they trust you and they know what you can do. And if not, they're like, I know they can do this. I bet they can also do this. Those are really special. That doesn't mean to say you have to take every single one of those opportunities. I think it's good to realign with what is right for you, but it's really special when friends fight for you, especially in this industry when it feels like you're constantly fighting for yourself. It's nice when you, when the other people in your corner that are always in your corner um, yell a little louder than you can yell. The next thing that, uh, number six, the next thing that I loathe. <laughs> is the unpredictability of my hangovers. Y'all, I am 33. I can't figure them out. I could have a night where I drink one margarita, one margarita, and probably a not very strong one, and have a hangover that I curse everyone over. Or I could drink an entire bottle of wine and feel nothing the next day. Or mix and mingle, and I'm like, it's a crapshoot. Like, truly, I... The only thing that makes me go, yeah, this is not going to be a fun morning the next day is if I do shots of some kind. And even that, the last time I did that was for Gabe's birthday in San Francisco. And we did like one of those ski shots and there were more shots than there were people. And I was like, I'll be a champion and take the second one. Dumb. <laughs> because that hangover the next day did not start when I woke up. It started like 30 minutes after I woke up and thought I was chill and then it just stayed with me all day. <laughs> and I flew out that night. So they're so unpredictable. So I'm just like, anytime I drink alcohol, I'm like, well, here we go, bitches. <laughs> we'll have liquid IV on hand and we'll drink water <laughs> and we'll try to sweat it out the next day, but we don't know what's coming. Number seven, the next thing that I love, this is a weird one. Why did I put this down? I was clearly like, I don't know what to put. But this is something that I love. But it's it's like, this is a weird thing to put on the list. But it's here, so I'm going to read it. My hot water maker slash kettle. <laughs> Can we tell I was very tired when I started this list? You know, I have to say, this hot water maker, it is pretty great. It's one, it, it's not like a full-on kettle like I see people have. But like, it's not very pretty. <laughs> and you push down on it so it kind of feels like pumping out well. But um. It's extremely convenient. Like the amount of oatmeal I've had in the morning because I have this thing, it's a very healthy breakfast. And I'm making coffee in like a French press, very fancy. It's, it's good for my hot chocolate. It's so weird. Why did I put that on the list? But it's there. So yes, love a hot water maker. Number eight, this thing I'm learning, um, I've briefly touched on it and let's admit I 
touch on it all the time because this is just life. And all of these things are things I've learned and I'm continuously learning. I, I am learning how to maneuver in my life with ADHD. I think now that I know the truth of it, oh, I've had this my whole life and I wasn't just being like a good little girl who was quiet in class but also talked a lot but like kept her hands on the desk and studied really hard and stayed up late, 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 late because her homework took her so long to do. I Sometimes I would like zone out and I still do zone out into space where my brain is literally like on the fastest level of a treadmill just going. I don't understand how my brain and my body are connected because of that feeling. Um, that's ADHD, folks. I'm learning that like my brain just moves so fast. I'm trying really hard to be in a space of figuring out how to use that to my benefit rather than my detriment because there's a lot of shame that comes around with ADHD of of not feeling like I can get my tasks done and my my productivity like monster goblin is angry because I scroll on my phone because it's that is such an easy way for me to disassociate and learning to maneuver through life with knowing that this is what is up with my brain and maybe something else too but I haven't been diagnosed with that yet but like effectively I haven't really been diagnosed with ADHD but your girl knows um it's wild it's wild to kind of be like, oh, that's what that was growing up. Okay. So that informed this, that, and the other. And no wonder, no wonder I'm learning how to not have shame around things that I need um, because my brain is, makeup is just a little different than someone else's. And, um, you know, that comes with its difficulties of feeling like I need to prove that my ADHD hinders certain things about me. Um, I was literally going through this with my therapist the other day. I was like, I know you're not attacking me, but like these suggestions make me feel like the way I have to maneuver through life is not good enough and not valid enough because the way that my brain works is different than others. And that's okay. ADHD can be such a superpower in that like I have so much space for creativity in my brain, almost too much space where I get overwhelmed. So I start little projects here and there. I'm really good at crafting. If you tell me you need like your sofa upholstered, I'll probably figure it out. It's just, it's really interesting to try to think of it through that lens because, hey, I got through college really well. It wasn't easy, but I did really well. And I think it's because of the hyper-focus that I would have at certain times of studying and stuff like that because when I'm in the mode... I make some cool shit. Now it's about finding how to have that balance of maneuvering through the world that we live in and still making the cool shit and feeling good about myself in the brain that I have because I'm only going to have one brain. Number nine, a loathe. I fucking hate getting mail, mainly medical bills. <laughs> I fucking hate bills. I love when friends send me cards. I love little letters. I love all that shit. I love a package. But I'm so sick. I'm so sick of snail mail. Why are we sending out advertisements through the mail anymore? Why are we doing that? That's such a new thought. But we've been getting crazy medical bills since Gabe had his um, emergency last year. And it's just like, number one, these insurance companies sell the same send the same shit over and over again it's like i've already paid it leave me alone so yeah very very new very original thought i hate mail number 10 thing that i love (laughs) my tattoo i love my tattoo so much i got it in la i pretty much got it on the anniversary of when i came out i want to do a whole episode on this but i came out later in life as a bisexual woman and um it's been a big journey for me big big journey huge I I got a tattoo which always felt like a taboo thing for me to do in my family and in my life and be like you're not gonna get work if you get, to get tattoos fucking bullshit absolute bullshit I love my tattoo so my tattoo is on my left forearm and it's very delicate and it's um it's just like fine lines and it's a woman embracing herself with a bouquet of like really beautiful wildflowers coming out at the top of her head. And for me, it symbolizes just this like whole journey I've been going on of 
self-love, self-discovery, um, self-compassion and grace. And yes, it's about my coming out, but it's also about me stepping into the imperfect human that I've always been and learning to love her and accept her in every form she's been in. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in a different love um, or a different learn. But yeah, I love this tattoo. I find myself uh, forgetting about it and then looking down and seeing it and getting really, really happy, which I think is like, it doesn't have to be the goal of your tattoo, but I think when that is the goal, after so many years of wanting one, I know if people want to give me that argument, like, what do you think when you're old? I'm going to look down and be like, I've survived some shit. And this is a reminder. And it's fucking cute. It's going to be so cute when I'm old and wrinkly. You kidding? So I have a couple ideas for a couple more. Oh, I have I have one definite idea. Um, but I'm sure I'm going to be getting many more tattoos. Not sorry about it. If you have a tattoo, that's dope. If you don't, that's fine. You don't have to have a tattoo. But I feel very, very cool at the gym when I'm lifting and I have my tat out. And I'm like, <laughs> tat in. Number 11, next thing that I learned resetting my space at night in order to like set myself up for success the next day, it has to be done. It has to be done to some extent because for me, I remember Lindsay and I talking about this one day where it's like, it's kind of like when you work retail and your job is the night shift and the closing shift is to like basically make sure things are as cleaned up as possible. You don't want all the hangers all over the place. You want things finger spaced. I had to, I used to have to do that where I'd have to like finger space. Everything was, I kind of loved it. I kind of loved it. It was very therapeutic for me. In a way, it's kind of like last night's mess is tomorrow's problem. And I don't want to create a problem for myself first thing in the morning. I like coming down the stairs and like seeing a fresh space. I know that that's a luxury that I have. Like I don't, I don't have children. So I don't need to worry about that type of cleanup situation. And Daisy has just a couple toys out. And yeah, I, she's got a lot of fur and stuff like that that I'm constantly cleaning up. But like, it's usually just my mess that I'm cleaning up. I create a very big mess, especially when I like have a self tape. Anybody else who self tapes, it's like, I don't know what happens, but we're like throwing everything all over the place. And then once we're done the self tape, we're like, our world is in a vacuum. And we're like, well, I'll deal with that later. And then you're like, oh my God. <laughs> it takes forever to clean up. I always need to like clean up my space, put the dishes in the dishwasher or wash the dishes. Like I got to get the dishes done and just make it feel as tidy as possible because when my space is tidy, my brain is a little a little more um, available for disk space and and it helps – it just helps me. I usually write a list, a to-do list to do for the next day, even there, if there's only two things on it, at least it's started because when I don't do those things for like a week or something, like kind of my morning routine is kind of the only routine that's stuck since everything turned upside down in the world, uh, with the pandemic at least. Yeah, I'm my mornings I need some peace because it feels like I don't get peace elsewhere and um, my space is something that I can control. So I like to do that for myself. Oh, I forgot to write a loathe down. What's something that I loathe? I gotta say, I have cut out a lot of this episode already because I've been recording it for some time because Daisy keeps making me stop. And I love this dog. I do not loathe this dog, but I loathe when she cries. And it's like, it's it's just for more attention. Like I I give this dog so much attention. I am the only one here. She is my shadow. We are always cuddling, but like, when is enough enough for this dog? <laughs> like, oh my God, she's so needy. And I'm very grateful to have her and I love her to bits. But when she just like cries and cries and cries, it's like, it's like it over overstimulates me sometimes. And I just like, I, scre I just screamed into a pillow. Like I, I, my voice is now raspy because she was frustrating me so much. And all she wants is that squeaky toy. And I can't have a squeaky toy right now. And it's like, she doesn't understand English, so she doesn't understand that I'm telling her not right now. So I don't loathe that, but it is infuriating. And I'm sure the pandemic had a big part to do with this because she was gave some mine like our main source of like make me happy, be my serotonin. But now that I'm like trying to be social and auditioning again and and getting back to work, like creating a timeline for myself that's that 
that isn't for anybody else because that is something that I do. I found that I really live for other people and their schedules and what they need. I'm starting to be like, no, like we're going to start to do that for us because we're the only ones that are going to do that. She's not on board with that. (laughs) She's like, no, everything me. She's a typical pit bull in that like needy, I need love and attention. And I love her and I will do that. But like, I can't spend my entire day doing it. And that's what she wishes I could do. And I think that's what she's been frustrated with me filming, recording this because I'm not paying, trying not to pay attention to her. And I'm sitting on the ground on her bed, holding the microphone in my hand. And she's not even in here now. I loathe this dog sometimes. All right, number 13, something that I love. Let's talk about some fucking podcasts because we know I'm a podcast bitch. I love a podcast. The ones that I've been listening to this year that have been giving me a lot of peace. Um, The Deep Dive is like probably my favorite podcast to listen to. It is with June Diane Rayfield and Jessica St. Clair. And these two actresses are just so funny. And um, even though they're – a lot of podcasts I listen to are like moms. I love this podcast so much. It's just so funny. And I just find myself going back to like my favorite episodes and listening to them over and over again because it feels like I have friends in my ears talking to me. So I've been listening to a lot of podcasts like that where like that's the relationship of like friends just having bants talking to each other and kind of reading each other for filth. And that would definitely be like Trixie and Katya's podcast called The Bald and the Beautiful. So I love, I love that podcast. I love What a Day. That's probably the best podcast that I listen to for news. It's not even quite like I think they recorded at night for the next morning to go up. It's just a really great news source that um, it's very reliable. They have a lot of different experts on to talk about things like COVID and um, different political happenings to try to explain things on a level that people who aren't fully engrossed in politics and like what the policies are and and who the certain people being elected, like what their grounds and what they stand for. And they're a great, great podcast. So I highly, highly suggest listening to that one if you want a credible news source. Really also love listening to Attitudes with Brian Safi and Aaron Gibson. It used to be called Ad- it used to be called Throwing Shade. It's now Attitudes. And it's just it gives my heart joy. And I I'm also like learning things about gender inequities and LGBT um, happenings and and things that are going on in both of those environments. And it's for the she's, they's, and gays, to be quite fair. It's a great podcast. And it also like makes light of things that are are really heavy sometimes and gives great resources too. It's I, I wouldn't quite call it like a news source because even they're like, we are not a news source. Also, their podcast called Groceries in which they – refuse to talk about anything deep and they just talk about various grocery stores that they go to and what those stores have to offer, the history of it. It's amazing. Ask Rana. And it's a great advice podcast, uh, again, with Brian Safi and Rana Glickman. And if you know, you know. And it's it's one of those podcasts that I listen to. I only listen to it at night so that I will it will take me away from a screen and just give me like some calm before going to bed and some laughs. Another podcast that's like that that I listen to when I'm walking and when I'm driving is Ladies and Tangents. Again, just two friends. I think they're cousins and they're just great. They just talk about whatever the hell they want to. And that's like my dream of a podcast. But speaking of podcasts – that are like that, that I love. Um, My podcast with my friend Maddie Limerick, it is Exit Stage Death, a true crime and musical theater podcast or just theater podcast. And um, it's fantastic. It's a great podcast. By the time this comes out, we've just finished our first season. We've got some bonus episodes coming out, but it's really a great, great show. We've had a lot of guests on so far, but we talk about basically true crimes that have either happened in the theater, around the theater, like community, or shows that are about that crime in particular. And there's a lot of, I always say, there's a lot more crossover than you think, but there is. And I think it's a great podcast and I highly suggest checking it out. We love hearing like listener stories of like spooky um, theater stories or honestly, any ghost story you have is, is one that we will tell. And I love that. I love that kind of shit. And we just have a fun time doing it. Number 14, something I'm learning. I was actually having a conversation with myself to myself today about this. I am learning this year. I'm failing a lot. I'm having lots of stumbles. I think I'm learning this year how to be a better friend. 
I've been very judgmental of myself about how to be a friend to female relationships, mainly female relationships where like, I don't think I, I don't think I was one of those like pixie manic dream girls where like, oh my God, like I'm not like other girls, but like I did have a lot of male friends growing up and I felt like I just got them more in some ways, but then the older I get, I'm like, I don't fucking understand men at all. I'm sick of men. (laughs) I'm like, I want female friendships and I'm starting to really have some beautiful friendships and I'm, I think I'm constantly afraid I'm going to fuck it up because I didn't do so well with those friendships growing up. College is when I really started to like figure it out and figure out that, oh, not everybody has to be a best friend and one best, you don't have to have one best friend. It's not all or nothing. Some people can just be good time friends. Some people can be, you share deep things with those friends and some people are just acquaintances and that's okay. Some people are just peers. Uh, Obviously quality over quantity, but I'm I'm learning uh, a friendship is like any other type of romantic relationship, right? Like you're going to have fights, you're going to have things that you need to put boundaries up. You're going to need to be like, "No, this is not a good way to love me. This is a good way to love me." Or oh, I need to challenge myself to see things from different people's perspectives and and to understand how they communicate and how I need to be communicated with. And we find a middle ground or we don't. And maybe that's something that we like keep to the side or or address at a later time. And it's really hard Forming, forming good female friendships, at least for me later in life is really hard because female friendships have always felt very competitive to me. And I'm trying desperately to unlearn that. And it's taking some time. It's taking some some growing pains. But it's something that I'm like, no, I want to figure this out because so many of the women that have come into my life in the past couple of years are so precious to me. And I think it's helping me be a better daughter. I think it's helping me be a better sister. I'm hoping it is. And also just like a better partner to my husband. Like female relationships are so fucking important because we already run the world, whether men like to think of it or not. Like we influence so many things. Oh, something that, another hot take. And if it's that hot of a take, maybe this isn't the podcast for you. Or maybe it is and you need to like learn a thing or two. I am so fucking sick. I loathe entirely people using mainly the Christian faith and the Bible as a weapon. I am so sick of it. I think it's because so much is like with like the don't say gay bill and and people going after drag queens at story hour and fucking mass shootings that are happening like this year the most anti trans legislation was being brought to is it the house that's first before the senate Roe v. Wade being overturned, so the attack on reproductive rights and just bodily autonomy. It's just, and it's always in the name of of what the founding fathers said in the Constitution. We're in 2022. Not everybody in the United States is Christian. The Republican agenda is a very white Christian agenda. And if you disagree, um, you're blind. Sorry, not sorry. I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick. I was raised Catholic and this is a huge portion of like why I don't subscribe to it anymore. There's things that I'm taking with me and I'm like, no, those are mine. I will be taking those with me. That's where my God is. That is where my faith is. That is where my spirituality is. These are the things that I take and I think that's okay um, because it's my life. Again, a whole episode I'd like to get into. But um, I'm, I'm so sick of people brandishing Christianity and G-O-D and Jesus as like their their sword. It's like Jesus was brown, radical, wore a dress, and fought for the poor and fought for the sex workers and fought for everyone that wasn't paying you taxes. So where where are we – like where is the communication? Like when did Jesus become this like – white guy that hated the gays. Like, I don't think that ever was true. I get heated really easily. <laughs> and um, I just, I I think there's a lot of like unpacking that I'm still doing with that in my own life. But like, I, I get so sick 
of people using the one particular faith, like truly Christianity. Yes, there's like radicalism in different faiths, but like it's not to the level of like radical Christians. It's just not. <laughs> it's just not. And um, stop fucking giving guns to boys and men in their 20s. Um, stop giving guns out in general. <clears throat> anyway, hot takes. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. So next thing, number 16, something that I love. Let's get back onto the love. I love how independent I've become. There are things that I'm doing recently that I'm like, shit. Okay. Like I started this podcast. I stopped thinking about it and I just did it. I've become so independent with like doing my gigs and traveling. And yeah, I still think I have like a lot of codependent nature to me. I feel like especially after going through this pandemic, it's like the amount of codependency that's happened is relentless. But I I really feel like I've, I've just learned – like I learned how to cook. Like I said earlier, I I put a bed together. I've – I've set up appointments. I, I've just done a lot of adulting this year and I'm really proud of myself for not asking for help on everything. I do ask, I think I do ask for more help than I used to, which is good. But I also feel like I've done a lot on my own because I've needed to do a lot on my own. I've needed to learn how to do these things by myself. Daisy went through this thing where I had to give her all these fluids. My mother-in-law helped me and I was very, very grateful. But like when I would like go to the vet to pick up her medicine, I was just like, I'm doing this damn thing. Look at me being all adult. Kind of never feels like you grow up. But I'm like, I'm 33. I am a fully functioning adult. Which goes into number 17 is something that I've learned and I'm constantly learning is life is literally anything you want it to be. There are no rules. So much of it is chaos. I personally believe that there is because I if if there isn't, I'm like, fuck it all. (laughs) Like, and maybe that's more of what we need. But like, I believe that there is a higher power guiding us through this life. I do believe that I have a team of light. I have a team of loved ones from the other side that are helping guide me through the world. And and I think there maybe there is a such thing as destiny, but like I really, really think that so much of it is chaos and so much of it of these rules that we think exist don't exist like like the path of a career there's no one path whoever told us it was there was someone out there that did and the thought stuck it's so harmful because it makes people quit it makes people so unhappy it makes people harm themselves like there is no one way to do anything there's always multiple ways that's fucking beautiful and it's confusing because when you f- when you have to find the way for yourself that works for you, that takes a lot of time and energy and and resources and money and, and time and precious energy. But like when you find the way that works for you, it's like, oh, yeah, it can be this easy because that's what works for me. So I do love that. I'm learning that. I have to relearn it all the time. But when I sink into those moments of being present and being like, ah, nothing matters. <laughs> There's billions of planets, billions of like galaxies, like that telescope showed us. I was like, oh, nothing matters. Truly nothing matters. Like everything matters here, but like nothing matters at the same time. Okay, cool, cool. I'm going to take a nap then. Yeah, I'm going to eat some pickles out of the jar. It goes on. A love of mine then is is pickles. I lo- freaking love a pickle. I love a pickle. Gabe hates pickles. So we just didn't really have them in the house that often. Fuck that. When he comes home to live, there will always be pickles in that fridge. Gabriel, I know you're listening to this. There's always going to be a freaking pickle. There's going to be pickles in the fridge because I love a pickle. They're so yummy. Kosher dill, fuck it up. I love that shit. Oh, I need to get more. All right, so I'm going back. Uh, This was number 18. So that was 19, but this is 18, something that I loathed. Oh, I put this down. I don't know how true this is because like I just said, if you find a way that makes life easier for you, do it. Um, I I do, although <laughs> although with like my neurodivergence, like it makes it very difficult to just l- live a life that's like carefree. Like I say all what I, whatever I just said of like nothing matters, uh, but I am like also like a highly anxious person. <laughs> like I am also someone that's like, oh, okay, we're going to be spontaneous. Can I plan the spontaneity? Like I have to make a list. 
if I don't make a list, if I don't follow some type of like morning routine, like I said earlier, like I am in a very tough spot mentally. And that's very frustrating. I wish I could just like always live on a whim and live in the present, but it's very, very difficult for me to do that and to and be sustained in doing that. And that's okay. It sucks. I loathe it, but it's okay. All right. Uh, I said pickles because we love a pickle. Uh, number 20. We're nearing the end, folks. And my battery on my computer is going to die soon. So number 20, learn that there's always going to be something to be annoyed at. So that means there always has to be something to be grateful for. There's always got to be something to find gratitude in. That's not to say to like not feel what you need to feel and not um, not honor those feelings, but there is richness around us. There is something to be grateful for. This dog is annoying the hell out of me today, but the sun is shining in the room and the disco ball has really pretty lights on it and it's making me happy to at least at even though she's crying and like needing everything from me that I can't give her right now and don't want to give her right now, to be quite honest, at least I'm sitting in a room that has plants and quirky shit on the walls and I'm recording this. Like that's richness to me. Um, And after this, I think I'm going to eat something yummy because I'm getting hungry. I'm getting hangry. So I think with the shit, there's always something good. Even if there's less good than you want it to be, there's always something. And laughter is beautiful. Whenever you can find a belly laugh, oh, live in that. Number 21, something I've loathed. I'm sitting here and trying to think of a loathe because I had one and I deleted it because I just was stupid (laughs) and it was tone deaf and I was just in my feelings. Um, But something I really loathe I don't know why I'm having a hard time thinking of one. So screw it. I'm going to do a double love. Um, pomegranate seeds. I've, I've, I'm, I'm new onto pomegranates. I love a pomegranate. That's enough for me. I want it like obviously for loathe. I think this is the last, last of my loathes. I loathe huge, huge things <laughs> like um, racism and anti-Semitism. Loathe those. But those are huge topics that I'm not just going to have a couple of um, words about. There's such bigger issues that require so much more um, in-depth speaking about. (laughs) I loathe transphobia. I loathe Islamophobia. I loathe all of these things that ostracize people from rights and privileges that other people just have because of how they were born. But that also feels insensitive to just like put that in a listicle, which basically this is, and deserve their own episodes, to be quite honest. Something that I love, um, I am loving, this is number 22, I am really, oh wait, I have 23 down. Okay, well, something that I love in 2022, and I think it's probably the most important thing that I've loved this year, is that I'm reconnecting with like my younger self. I call her little Emily. I'm, I'm reconnecting with her a lot lately and... Um, sometimes it's just with things that I want to do. Like there was one day in the summertime, I heard the ice cream man and I was, I was at my desk and I was working and I was like, oh, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun to like get an ice cream? But I'm working. And I went, it will take me two seconds to run out to the ice cream person and, and get myself something. And I did. And it was lovely. It tasted like crap, obviously. (laughs) Like it was not good, but it was just like so nice. It was so wholesome and fun and (laughs) silly and I was just like like among like three other like small children and they were kind of like looking at me like why is this like old lady (laughs) getting ice cream because I wanted ice cream and my heart was like get some ice cream and I did and so I found myself doing that a lot and then I took a break because I was just like okay I can't have every sweet treat in the world. I still have to like pay for dental stuff if I get a cavity but I really enjoyed – And I do enjoy just like reconnecting with little things that would like make little Emily quake like with excitement. 
like wearing overalls again. Like I love wearing overalls. Anytime I find an overall or like a one, a jumpsuit kind of thing that fits and makes me feel good. Oh my God, I love it. Little Emily is quaking. But I'm also learning, and this is kind of to round it out because I made this realization like last week or two weeks ago. I, 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 I like all of us. This is a very revealing episode I'm realizing. I think so many of us, speak negatively towards ourselves and I think those voices are very loud in our heads and they're hard not to believe because they're very convincing. They do a very good job at trying to protect us from the scary outside world so they tell us narr- – our brain tells us narratives that aren't true, that create very real and big feelings. It's like creating like a boogeyman of your life. For me, that manifests in like really negative self-talk and I'm trying to learn to stop doing that to myself because whenever – Whenever I speak meanly to myself, I would, number one, never say that to my niece. I would never say that to my friends. I would never say that to my husband. Like some of the things I say to myself, I'm like, I would never say this to my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish this this type of sentence on anyone else. So why am I saying it to myself? You know, when people are like, will say that phrase, like stop being mean to my friend, but referring to themselves, like I've I've started to take that on for myself. When I'm able to catch myself, I apologize to my younger self for it because it was just mean and that wasn't necessary. So what I started to do is I have a picture of, like an old picture of myself on my phone. And I'm going to switch it out every now and again. It's a really cute picture of me with like the the haircut I have now. (laughs) But like my bangs are like split down the middle because I have a big cowlick and I still have the cowlick and I'm wearing my overalls and I've got this like this block tower that I made like standing right next to me is like very precarious. And I'm just smiling and – I'm so sweet and I'm so like pure and just like, oh, there's no negative self-talk yet. She's so kind to herself. She's just playing. She's just here. So I'm trying desperately to reconnect and to parent her and to take care of her. But I've realized that that little toddler Emily, little three or four-year-old Emily who's so adorable, isn't the only Emily that needs to be seen and heard and taken care of. If anything, that little Emily, she's doing just fine. (laughs) If anything, it's 12-year-old Emily. It's 15-year-old Emily. It's 17-year-old Emily. It's 19-year-old Emily. It's every Emily in between, the awkward years, the years where I was an asshole, the years that I was so, so lost, the years that I was so, so confident and had no right to be so. So I'm going to switch out those pictures and like – pictures that kind of connect with those different eras in a way and put them on my phone too because not only am I being mean to little Emily who's so innocent and truly has the world wrapped around her finger and her whole family wrapped around her finger and everything she needs I'm also being cruel to those other Emilys I'm being cruel to the Emily that had the bravery to come out I'm being mean to the Emily that said yes to marry the love of her life I'm being cruel to the Emily that stood up for someone being bullied in school. I'm I'm being mean to the Emily that is already heartbroken because her friends betrayed her. Like I, there there's so many versions of Emily that I'm being cruel to when I'm cruel to myself. And also when I'm cruel to other people. Like I'm not perfect by any means. Like I have moments when there are people around me that fucking bug me. And when I realized some of those people that bug me remind me of myself and maybe in a stage of my life where I didn't I really didn't like myself and that's the version of myself that they remind me of and then annoys the hell out of me. I found myself doing this where I was like, why am I being so mean to her? She's actually not doing anything to me that affects me. She's just living her life and it's just annoying me. Why does it annoy me? And I was like, oh, it's because she reminds me of me and I didn't like that version of me. And I was like, well, what does that version of me need? She needs compassion. She needs love. And it's so annoying. Like, it's like, oh, fucking healing. (laughs) Healing is so fucking annoying. It's so much work. So exhausted. Yeah. So that was more than 22 things. And there's more than 23 things. There's so much more. So many more things that I love. Like, I love the warmth warmth of this dog when she cuddles next to me. And I love that she cuddles with me in bed even though she pushes me off the bed. But I love these like chunky back – I'm holding onto it now. I love these chunky back thighs of this dog and her jowls and her feet. I love this dog. I love when 
the sun is shining and I see a double rainbow. I saw a beautiful double rainbow one morning recently. It was so gorgeous. But we are rich in this life in that we get to experience all these little and big things all together and get to weirdly put them all together in some kind of cohesive way at the end of a calendar year, which is also just made up. (laughs) Like, what is this life? It's always an existential crisis. But that's where I'm at. Peace out 2022. Thank you for what you did for me and where you got me and how you got me where I am. It sucked a lot of the time, but there were some really, really awesome moments. And I'm very grateful for all of it. Not 2021. 2021 can suck it. But I'm very grateful for 2022 and what um, all of the different parts of it. So that's the episode. Thank you for listening. It's much longer than I expected. I'm excited to bring these next episodes to you. We have I'm, I think we have a full season. I think we got it. <laughs> it's just a lot of editing for me to come. But we've gotten it. We've gotten so many interviews. I have so many friends um, that are going to be on the podcast and that you're going to in- be introduced to. Um, I think I said this in my last episode, but the, the, the podcast is going to become biweekly. And then I'm going to throw some bonus episodes in there once in a while for whatever I feel freaking feel like. But the episodes are still going to come out on Thursdays and the episodes are still going to come out on Thursdays, but it's going to be um, bi-weekly. I think every, I want to say every first and third Thursday of the month because that's just what you girls got going on and until things change, but I think that's what we're going to try. What were your love, learns, and loads of this year? Please uh, tag me on Instagram at Emily Martinez Official. Please subscribe to the podcast. Please hit downloads. Please rate uh, five stars, five stars only, as Ronna Glickman would say, Um, and write a comment in the comment section. You can do it literally within the app. This is for Apple users. If you scroll down past the the notes of the episode, you'll be able to see where you can rate it and you'll see where you can write a comment. You can do that literally every single time you open the podcast app. So if you would do that every once in a while, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Onward and upward. Let's go. Bye, friends. Happy New Year. Daisy, do you want to say Happy New Year? (laughs) Happy New Year from Daisy. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to this installment of Oh, I'm Lonely. I hope you feel a little bit more connected than you did before you turn on the podcast today. I know I do. Today's episode was hosted and edited by yours truly. Check me out on social media at Emily Martinez Official on Insta and Emily Martinez Entertainer on YouTube. But most importantly, please, please, please subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and every platform that you listen to podcasts. It would help us out greatly if you could download, rate, and leave a gorgeous little comment on our page because I would love to help more lovely, lonely humans like yourself, like myself, feel a little less, well, alone out there. Until next time, my friends.